Hi, how nice of you to join me on this wonderful morning. Why don't you grab a cup of coffee and uh, take a seat and stay tuned for this beautiful episode. So this episode, uh, I want to share with you a recent story. Um, I, my girlfriend got sick uh, for about eight days. She was extremely ill with a flu. And it wasn't an ordinary flu. I mean, it was intense. It was fever. It was sneezing. It was coughing. And um, yeah, it was, it was a lot. And it was very challenging for her emotionally because she is someone who is the healthiest person in the room always the most energetic person in the room always i've known her for a year and a half i've never seen her down and out she's always energetic she always has energy to spare and to give she's always feeling good happy upbeat i mean it's incredible okay it's the perfect partner for me not that i'm not always upbeat but after having gone through what i've gone through i'm not really interested in someone who goes deep into the shadows okay um she's in the light and she's in the light on a regular basis and um, during her eight days of, of being sick and seeing her emotional response to being sick, I, I remembered a very important story, okay? A very important thing that happened to me. Several years ago when I was living in the Amazon jungle, I had just moved into the Temple of the Way of Light for a three-month commitment, which ended up being longer. Um, and I began drinking ayahuasca once a week. And this was a phase in my life where I was deep into cleansing, in particular colon cleansing and juicing and fasting. So I had started to clean my body and started to connect to the divine and connect to God and the earth and started to clear out all my conditioned mind and my clear out my New Jersey and clear out, oh, that will never go away, all the way can't take the jersey out of the homeboy but you can take the homeboy out of jersey (laughs) so i began doing this cleansing and 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 i was diving deep with it and every day was suffering okay every day was agony and i'm suffering all day every day I'm in pain, I'm depressed, I'm tired, I'm anxious, I'm having panic attacks, I'm scared to die, scared to go crazy. And I'm drinking the medicine once a week with all of the people in that long-term community, okay? And in this particular ceremony, there was maybe 14 people there. And it was at the Temple of the Way of Light and it was with all of the long-term residents, many of them whom were new and had, didn't have that much experience with ayahuasca. And I'm questioning my point of why I'm there. Why am I drinking this stuff? Why am I in so much pain? What's the point of living? Why does God hate me? I'm just in this loop, loop, loop of negativity. And I'm in the middle of a ceremony experiencing shadows and demons and hell all over again like I did every single ceremony. And... I'm questioning, why am I here? What's my point of being here? Everyone seems like they're, everyone seems like they're doing so well. Everyone seems so happy. Nobody understands this level of pain. And I'm sitting upright in my meditation position, giving my all to the ceremony, giving my all to my breath. And a glimmer of light shines in, a glimmer of light, okay? And that it was the medicine, it was ayahuasca just beaming on me. And and what ayahuasca said, and, and not said, but it was just in my face, visceral lesson, was right now, you're teaching all of these people how to suffer. And I was a little confused by it, trying to dig deeper into it. And then it, you know, the intuition, the understanding came in. I'm so good at dealing with my pain. I'm so, I have so much integrity around my pain and my suffering. And you're teaching everyone in this room how to suffer with grace. 
and it was almost like like geez like it was almost like the first glimmer of like of 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 who i was you know at that point in time i had no idea who i was what i mean by that is i had no idea that i would help thousands of people around the world one day i had no idea that i was a powerful person that i was a powerful soul that i had a big gift i didn't understand any of that i mean maybe i had little thoughts of it but i didn't it wasn't imbued in my being and that was the first glimmer of it when it really stuck in that first embodiment of it and it was i was i sat proud i sat proud i i i looked around and i saw other people who suffered without grace big time without grace and might i add a little ego in there it was much less pain than what i was dealing with too okay that's all relative maybe to them it was their hell but i could i could i just couldn't i knew they weren't going through what i was going through maybe that's not appropriate to say but uh whatever so so i here i am in my hell and i'm doing it with such grace what does that mean well i never put it on anyone i never projected it on anyone the worst damage i did was to my own girlfriend at the time which of course is where it is the easiest to get caught in and the people closest to us I'm not saying you have to be enlightened and never get pissed at people who are closest to you, but for the other 99% of your human interactions, there is a way of suffering with immense amount of grace. And I never put it on others. I never expected things from others. I never never needed others in like a really needy victim way. I I suffered with grace. I walked every step with my own pain in this container i didn't throw that on someone else because i knew that it, and it took me time to get to this point this was already a year into an immense amount of suffering because i knew that it was pointless i knew that by going down that pathway of blaming that person for this agony that i was just then creating more of this virus on the planet i knew that by desperately getting someone's approval that it was a short-term little drug that would only soothe me like a Percocet did for a short period of time. I knew that it wasn't the real balm that I needed. It was like a Vicodin. I didn't want any Vicodin. I wanted what what I I wanted the real thing. I wanted that peace inside in my heart and my belly. So suffering with grace became a way of life for me after so many years of torture of breaking of becoming helpless and there was an incredible gift in that in those years that 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 imbued in my being to walk around in, in an immense amount of agony and to still say hi to someone at the grocery store to still smile to still give your heart whatever's left of it to not shut someone's down shut someone's joy down because they're joyous and you're miserable to not project your pain onto someone else to not to not make it about someone else to know that it's that internal void that many of us carry that is the real thing to be worked on it's not about your girlfriend it's not about the restaurant the waiter it's not about any of that none of that will actually solve that internal problem so if you can get to a place of suffering with grace it's a very 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 powerful place to be now we're not trying to torture ourselves and we're not trying to suffer but if it's there in particular the pain aspect of it because suffering is a little different than pain right suffering is it can it creates the connotation that it's a little unnecessary pain is is there so perhaps a better explanation of all of this is painful grace you know being graceful with your pain but if you can get to that place of of not fighting not resisting not thinking that anything is going to solve this problem but you and your work and your breath you are in a 
a place of potential and you are not letting your pain run your life because the reason I am where I am today, okay, I believe is because, not because I snapped my fingers and escaped suffering, it was, it's been a very long process, but because of even at my worst, I did my best to not manifest from that place, okay? Even at my worst, I tried not to create my life from that space and from that place. I had safety people who I would reach out to during those times who could talk to me and understand that space and talk me out of it and help me and help hold it. I didn't, from that place, believe those thoughts of this person's fucking me over, this person's doing that, fuck this person, fuck this job, fuck this th whatever, right? I, I recognized that as the virus and I didn't want the virus to spread and I didn't want it to create my life. I didn't want it to be contagious because then what you're doing is you're actually doubling the pain because if you have the pain and you live your life based on that pain and you listen to that little voice, you'll tear down all of this earthly stuff. This earthly stuff being your money, your financial situations, your relationships, your house, your landlord, your living situations, your family, all of this stuff that is like a support structure for the spiritual journey. You know, I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to go through pain now having money in the bank and having a YouTube following and having a loving relationship. It's a lot easier to go through pain now knowing that I have this support structure to prevent me from going down the fucking shithole versus back in the day when there was none of that, right? Um, I mean, I never had none of it, but I, but my point is that had I, had I, pain was a lot scarier in that place because I didn't have this support structure. But if you listen to that pain, if you watch for its voice, if you track its voice, it actually wants to take all of that stuff out and take it down with the ship, right? So you can't listen to it because then you, you have your pain, your pain brings down your earthly structures and then now you're, you have pain and you have less earthly support, less people, finances, home, safety. So when one is weak, you don't wanna fuck the other one over you want to cultivate the other one as best as you can, right? You want to cultivate both. But my point is that you, you, you want to be very present to, to that darkness, to those shadows and what they are really seeking. Because in your mind, you may feel like you are justified, right? Like you are right. You are so right. That person needs to be taught a lesson, okay? But then you could, I'm sure you've experienced this where only a few days go by, you come out of this seemingly, seeming dream, like a dream, and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I was so upset about that. I can't believe I actually manifested from that place. And I texted him and I, right? And then you're sending out the, the vibration to the world of your pain. You're magnifying it. You're creating the pain inside, the true nature of pain and suffering is not what will manifest your life. You could be in agony and you can still create an amazing life. Um, granted, you won't have the manifestation power that you would if you were truly in peace, but it, being in agony internally does not automatically equate the world fucking you the way that like manifest, like ma new age manifestors are teaching you that like if you're in pain internally the world will give you more pain no 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 you could be in pain you could be in agony and you don't have to create from that place you have a choice of choosing the light there's always light inside of you no matter how much pain you're in there's always a little bit of clarity an inch of clarity okay a tiny space of awareness of what you're going through so 
So as far as like, if there's anyone out there that if you have fear that like your life is going to fall apart because of your internal pain, the whole world is in pain. It's how you deal with your pain. What's your relationship to it? How are you bringing it out to the world or lack thereof, hopefully? And just being this orb that allow, that you deal with your own pain. You're dealing with it. You're still a light. You're, you're here for light and love. Yeah, you got this thing. You're working on it. You, you give it to the right people who can hold it. But you don't just bleed it out and leak it out all the time. You work on it like a project, silent project. And sometimes not so silent. Talk to the people. Share your feelings. Bring it forward. But in a container. And then you are viewed as a master or a person on the path to mastery, no matter how much pain you're in. Okay. And the reason I know all of this to be fact is because if you go back to my first videos on this channel, even when I, I guess, claimed to be healed, I don't think I ever claimed, but when I, in the beginning of this channel, you, you, you'll hear me saying detox changed my life. It did. I still had a mega, mega void. I'm a whole different person than I was back then. But back then to have claimed to like have some answers while still knowing how much pain I was in. And I manifested my life. I didn't, I didn't manipulate and lie. And I just manifested from a place of, Hey guys, I'm doing much better. I'm not enlightened, but I have pain. And I have gifts and I have light and I have wisdom. You have it all, right? So right now I'm in a much, much, much better place and I feel much more free. And I look back on that person two years ago, two and a half years ago, and I'm like, wow, that manifested a good life? That much pain still manifested a good life? How is that possible? For all the reasons I just explained. You don't need to be fully free to create a good life for yourself. You don't need to be free of internal conflict to create an epic, epic life for yourself. All right. Suffer with grace, pain with grace. Remember that it's yours. It's yours and you only have it because you can handle it. All right. That's all I got for you. Ciao.